So let's go into some algebra mistakes to start off. And the first one would just be like simplifying rational expressions. Now, again, guys, I understand when you're taking an exam, you might know exactly how to do it, but you have that stress, you have that anxiety, you have that frustration sometimes, and everything that you know kind of goes out the window. So I want to highlight some of these, and you might be like, I'm never going to make that mistake. But trust me, I have had many students, A students, that um, you would never expect to make the mistakes, but because they're going fast or because their brain is thinking about like maybe the next question or the question before, they make these mistakes. So for simplifying rational expressions, like if I had like x over 1 divided by x, we cannot apply the division property. A lot of times students will say, oh, well, these are going to divide out, and therefore this answer is just going to equal 1. No, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot divide across addition or subtraction. Now, the correct way that you could apply the division property is if you have quantities that are separated by multiplication. Now, I can divide out these two x's, and therefore, I would just have a final answer of x plus 1, okay? So make sure you're very, make sure you always are looking into factoring, and the factoring, again, is the process of rewriting an expression as a product, because once you have terms or expressions um, or numbers separated by multiplication, then you can go and apply that division property. Now, the next thing is assign errors. Now, this can happen for polynomials. It also happens a lot when we are adding, subtracting, or even um, solving our rational expressions. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail um, for like in ex all the examples that they occur, but I'll give you an example. Like if I had 3x squared minus quantity x squared plus 1, okay? A lot of times this will happen like when we're finding the common denominator of our rational expression and we get something like this. And then what students will do is they will rewrite this as a 3x squared minus x squared and then plus 1. And then they just want to go ahead and subtract because they see that these are like terms. And then therefore they say that's now going to be a 2x squared plus 1. And understand, ladies and gentlemen, this 3x squared is being subtracted by the quantity. That's why we have the grouping symbol of the parentheses for x squared plus 1. So we need to make sure you distribute that negative 1 to both of those terms. So therefore, it's going to equal a 3x squared minus an x squared minus 1. Now we can apply the subtraction to our quadratic uh, terms, and therefore I'll just get a 2x squared minus 1, okay? Another, another way that this actually comes up here is when we're dealing with like uh, imaginary numbers. Like if I have a 3i minus an i squared, just remember, ladies and gentlemen, i squared or i squared represents a negative 1. So a lot of times students will be, oh, it's a negative one, and they just like write it like this. No, ladies and gentlemen, use your parentheses. 3i minus negative one, or negative one, uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, that's what they'll do. Sorry about that. They'll take a negative one, and then they'll go ahead and add it into there. No, okay? Make sure you're using your parentheses, because a negative one squared is going to be a positive one, but we're still subtracting it, right? So it's a 3i minus a positive one, which now we can go ahead and rewrite as a 3i minus 1. Okay, so I wrote the correct answer, uh, you know, back in from on there. Um, just make sure also when you are solving with radicals, remember when we multiply and divide by a negative number, we're going to go and flip the inequality sign. So that's just a quick little tip. That's from like algebra 1. But again, students will make the mistake on an exam. Uh, the next one, again, is going to be a lot of times when we're dealing with rational exponents. So just remember if I have x to the 2 thirds, that is equal to the cube root of x squared, okay? So that comes into this common rules of exponents or for rational powers, x to the mn equals the nth root of x to the mth power. The other thing that students make mistakes on is when we have negative exponents, right? They sometimes want to treat that as like either a negative x, no, or they want to treat that as a negative 1 over x, uh-uh, okay? x to the negative first is simply just equal to the reciprocal, which is 1 over x. And the same thing, if I have a uh, 1 over x to the negative first power. Again, that's not going to equal a negative x. That is simply just going to be an x to the first power. So make sure you are dialed in on your exponents. You remember all those rules and just practice them. If you just practice a couple problems, guys, it becomes a lot easier to just to remember and not make mistakes. You don't need to, you know, memorize these or try to cheat on your exam. We don't want to do that. Just go through some practice problems and you're going to be just fine.